Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. I'm playing hooky from school again today and the reason is because I'm accepting a tarantula. Um, the story behind it is a little bit unusual and I've been busting a gut to tell you about it for the longest time now, but I didn't want to say anything until everything was said and done. But um, if you follow my videos, uh, back in um, late November, I think, right before December, right before Christmas time, um, on my video I had mentioned that I was trying to make a decision as to what kind of tarantulas I wanted for Christmas because that's what I wanted as my Christmas present and uh, I was tossing around the idea of you know I either wanted Monocentropus balfouri or I wanted the um, the uh, Harpactera poker piece and it's a little bit hard to say but um, I you know I hadn't decided which one of the two I really wanted and of course I did want other species but um you know those were my main ones that I was really concentrating on because I didn't have any baboon species except for my um HMAC and uh so I wanted to start start to get into the baboon species so anyway shortly after that video um I was approached by a um subscriber and uh, they said that they had an unusual proposition for me. So um, they contact me through Facebook Messenger. And, uh, you know, I, I read what it said and they said that they were going on a trip and uh, that this trip was along the Appalachian Trail and it takes about six months to do this trip. So um, they wanted to know if I would babysit their tarantulas and uh, in exchange they would purchase a tarantula of my choice uh, Monocentropus balfouri or H. Polkrapes. So at first I was like, you know, kind of skeptical and I was like, well, what's this guy's angle? And uh, I thought about it and I thought about it and I'm like, well, I, I don't really have anything to lose here. You know, they're, they're approaching me, wanting me to babysit their tarantulas and in exchange they're going to purchase a tarantula of my choice um, because, you know, I hadn't decided on what I wanted. So, you know, I, I, I wasn't quite sure what to think about it because, you know, t times the way they are these days, I really didn't know if I should trust this person or not. I didn't know if they were trying to scam me or what, but everything was not, you know, in, in, in the direction where I would be scammed, it was the other way around. This person was putting a lot of trust in me. So I wrote them back and I said, um, first of all, why me? And uh, second of all, can I vlog about it? You know, can I put it on my t YouTube channel? And um, I also asked if they would be willing to sign a contract in case one of those tarantulas happened to pass away for unexpected reasons other than my own, you know, if, if I did anything wrong or anything like that. So um, I got a response back and the person said that yes, they would be willing to sign a contract um, absolving me of any kind of responsibility if the tarantula should happen to die for just, you know, no reason whatsoever. Which, you know, does happen, but it doesn't happen all the time. And it's not something that, that is expected. But as far as why me, they said that I looked like I really cared about my tarantulas, I was passionate about my tarantulas, and um, that they would be willing to trust me with caring for their tarantulas. So I was a little bit flattered about that. I thought that was pretty cool. And um, as far as why they would want a stranger to take care of their tarantulas, well, this person um, is new to the area. They live locally here in a, in a nearby town. And um, they didn't really have anybody to take care of the tarantulas for them. And um, 
you know, it's not like anybody's willing to take care of tarantulas. It's kind of a specialized creature, and you have to know a little bit about them before you um, take on something like that. So he decided to approach me, someone who was knowledgeable. Um, I guess I am a public figure now, so I guess I can be trustworthy as far as that's concerned. And, of course, he said, vlog away. So um, that would, of course, ease his mind while he's on his trip. And if he sees his tarantulas on the video, then he knows they're okay. So, you know, I, I, I didn't have anything really to lose and I, I would be gaining a tarantula. Um, so I decided, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it for you. And uh, he asked me what kind I wanted. Well, at the time I hadn't decided, but then I finally did place my order for my tarantulas and I did decide to get the Monocentropus balfouri. I got six of them to keep communally. And of course, because they're cheaper and because you could keep them communally, that's why I decided to go that route. And I was gonna put the um, H, um, the uh, H. Polker peas aside until another time, maybe my birthday or maybe something else. So I said, okay, well, you know, I would really like an H. Polker peas. And uh, he said, okay. And I, I kind of dragged my feet on it, and it wasn't until after Christmas, I think, that I contacted him back and asked him, you know, which or told him which one I wanted. And uh, he got on it right away and decided he wanted to go ahead and get done with it um, because he wanted to go ahead and pay me so that, of course, I would be able to watch his tarantulas for him. Um, but the weather being as it is and of course the way that things work out with tarantulas um, he purchased this from fear not tarantulas and um, they did not ship until after the 8th of january because you know during the holidays they quit shipping temperatures go down and of course they have their own things going on and everything for the holidays so they kind of take a little break as far as shipping is concerned for for the tarantulas well after the 8th he was going to ship them to me or they were going to ship them to me and of course things got really cold we had that um that big storm and uh there was shipping delays on the uh, tarantula so everything kept being put off and put off um, it was supposed to come last week and then of course we had another cold snap and uh, the weather of course is in tennessee is where they're really concerned because tennessee is where uh fedex uh, ships or that's where they go through as far as shipping is concerned to this area. So um, the weather in Tennessee was going to be real cold. There were delays in flights and so on so they didn't want to send them out last week. So there was a further delay and then finally today conditions were right and I received my tarantula today. So here's the unboxing video of that tarantula and I hope you enjoy it. Whew, kind of shaky with excitement. Um, got my package in, so I'm gonna go ahead and unbox that. Now, I really don't know what's in here as far as um, if there's any extras, any freebies or anything like that. Um, sometimes they throw in freebies, you know. This came from um, Fear Not Tarantulas, so I don't know they did have some delays and I know that they were sending some free roaches to people because of the delays however the roaches that they were sending are not legal in Florida which are the red runners so um, I don't know if they're gonna try to compensate people from Florida not that I'm asking for or looking for any compensation but you know maybe because they can't send anything to Florida as far as those roaches are concerned maybe they threw something else in there so I have no idea uh, I'm hopeful, but you know, we'll see. All right, well, you see the holes on the outside right there. That's an indication that there is a heat pack in there. So let's open this up. All right. So we got a little card from Fear Not, another one to add to my collection, and the order manifest there, um, nicely packaged. We got the styrofoam on the top. And, oh yeah, it's really well packaged here. 
you've got the separate compartment over here for the heat pack and of course your tarantula is on this side separated by the uh, styrofoam so that we don't have any kind of touching on the heat pack so that um, your tarantulas don't burn up. So I'll go ahead and pull that out and yeah here's the heat pack right here. Throw that aside. Everything else is just packing material. <clears throat> All right. So we got one tightly wrapped Herpactera pulchropes, which is exactly what I wanted. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this enclosure right here. Um, this one's a little bit larger than I would normally put them in, but because it is a baboon species and because they are pretty quick and so on, I want to give it a little bit of extra room to, to, to roam around, I guess, and to just kind of web up the enclosure. They are a heavy webbing species. So um, I figured I'd go ahead and give it some extra room. So let me go ahead and open this up. I like how they use this. Uh, it's almost like electrical tape. It seals really nice. And their containers are very nicely labeled so you know exactly what you're getting. Pop that out. There's the uh, paper on top. And if we look inside. There's the little guy in there. And it looks to be fine. I've got my catch cup just in case. I don't want any runners. So I'll go ahead and pull it out. Let me move this over so we can see a little bit better. All right. And it looks like it's got plenty of room in there. I'm just going to unwrap it. It might just want to run right out. Yeah, it's trying to come out. Okay, so I'm going to put it down. Well, let's keep going here. you down here and see if you'll climb out on your own. Nope, he's crawling back in. Come on, little guy. Seems a little sluggish, but that's okay. Oh, he's good size. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. There it is, Herpactera. Oh, excuse me. There it is, Herpactera pulchropes, the uh, golden blue leg baboon. Gorgeous specimen. And I made him a little hole there. Thought he was going to go in. He's just exploring. All right, good size. So that was a short and sweet unboxing video. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I imagine someone would do this for me. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, thank you, Brian, for that. And um, I didn't want to just leave you with that short unboxing video because uh, obviously there wasn't that much to look at other than the one tarantula. So I figured maybe you could do with an update on my Christmas tarantulas and uh, we'll do a little feeding video here just to feed them and update you at the same time. So I'll start out with the uh, Ephonopelma hensi. These were the two freebies that I got. Um, they are still very tiny, obviously. 
And um, this one just molted, so I don't think we will feed this one today. And this one created itself a nice burrow. And I don't know if you can see it right there. It looks like it's hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this one. I've been feeding them fruit flies, and they've been doing very well with fruit flies. I'm almost out of fruit flies, so I'm probably going to have to get some more here real soon. All right, so uh, I hate fruit flies. All right, so I think one popped in there. There's a bunch flopping around everywhere, and I will squash those. All right, deal with them later. Okay, so we got one fruit fly in there. Looks like he's getting excited about it. It amazes me how quickly they sense something that is in there with them and they come out to find it. If it keeps bump bumping around like that, it will eventually come out and get it. Oh, it's getting close to the burrow. Let's see. No, we're probably not going to see anything right now. Okay, I'll leave it alone. Next up are my Monocentropus balfouri. Um, again, this is going to be kind of boring because they don't show themselves very much. Um, once I put them in here, they immediately went under the cork bark. And they do come out at night. And they have succeeded in webbing up all around the cork bark there and they live underneath it. Um, honestly, I can't tell you whether I still have all six or not. <laughs> I hope that I still do. I see some every now and then. I've seen up to four out at one time. And uh, so, you know, that's pretty good, I guess. So what I normally do when I feed my um, Monocentropus balfouri is I will usually pre-kill the prey. They seem to be shy about taking live prey. So I just squash their heads and I drop them in. And I usually drop them in kind of a spread out pattern. But they do have areas where they come out and they'll wiggle around a little bit and alert the um, tarantulas that are in there. And they'll come out and find the food. By tomorrow, every bit of it is gonna be gone. Oops. So I do know that they come out and venture out at night sometimes when I'm sleeping to the point where I don't see them, but they come out and they get the food. In the little time I've had them, I've already witnessed some very interesting behavior that I've never seen in tarantulas before. Um, I would definitely recommend this species to anyone, um, especially because you can keep them communally and they are very interesting in how they interact with each other. All right, forgot about my light. So I just leave them there and let them have at it. Next we have Brachypelma Emilia, and I still give her pre-killed prey because she's still pretty tiny herself. She's recently molted, so I'm not sure if she is ready to eat yet, but I'll still put one in there. Hopefully she will. But she's probably not. Okay, next I have Delicotheli diamantinensis. I have four of them. So let's see if they'll at least give us some action. Turn this around a little bit. Now these guys have been pretty interesting. They're very fast. Um, they are runners. They tend to run off 
and um, you have to be careful when you open the enclosure because they will have a tendency to want to bolt out of there sometimes but now they've kind of webbed it up and they stay within their little um, funnels that they've created um, they're feisty they take on prey without having to pre-kill it um, but you know it just depends on whether they're kind of out or not if they will go after the prey so I'm gonna put this one right about here and hopefully it will move around um, I know it's hard to see, but the tarantula is right down there. So the roach is moving, maybe we'll get some action. No action. D. Diamantinensis, number two. And I can't see where this one is. I'll just drop it in and hope for the best. The roach went down, no sign of a tarantula. D. Diamantinensis number three. Again, this one is not showing itself. Oh, I'm seeing legs. There we go. Well, we got one feeding there. Didier Montanensis number four. I wish they were had been sitting out because I had heard that they show color early on. And sure enough, almost immediately after I got them, um, they molted and probably third, maybe fourth in star and um, already they were showing some of that greenish color to their um, hair. So I'm gonna drop this one right here and hopefully we can get it to come out. There we go, maybe we'll get something here. Yes, we got it. Like I said, they're feisty little things. Oh, he hadn't quite gotten it yet. He'll get it. He's still trying. Right, this one is pretty fat. Pretty sure it's gonna molt soon. And I'm not seeing tons and tons of color on it, but probably by this molt, it will start displaying some of that greenish color. All right, well, he's got his job cut out for him. He'll get it eventually. At least we got to see it. The next three are Ceratogyrus marshalli. Now, again, these are burrowers. They stay down in their burrow and I hardly see them. Sometimes they'll come out at night, but maybe we can coax them out with some food.
No look there. C. Marshalli number two. Hopefully this guy will give us some action. I usually see this one. If the roach would move. Three hours later. All right, and see Marshalli number three. I'm gonna try this a little differently. What's the garbage service here? All right, let's see if we can coax it out. Got one good one. That's it for my video. Sorry for the short unboxing. I apologize for the boring feeding video. Um, that's just the way things go when you feed tarantulas. Um, normally, if I were showing a feeding video, I would get the highlights and make sure that you have an exciting video every time you feed. But I just wanted to give you an update on my Christmas tarantulas so that you can see how they were doing and maybe catch some of them eating. So anyway, sorry it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but that's just the way it goes when you're feeding tarantulas. Um, a special thank you to Fear Not Tarantulas. They did an awesome job with the shipping and uh, you know everything was boxed up perfectly the way it should be. Um, if you're looking for a tarantula or tarantulas, I would definitely recommend them. I give them my highest marks. They are very professional and they always do a great job. They really care about their tarantulas. There were some delays in the shipping and um, that's because the weather wasn't right in Tennessee where they were shipping through. And um, you know, they wanna make sure that the tarantulas arrive safely to you, not just because, not just for you, but because they care about their tarantulas as well. So highest marks for Fear Not Tarantulas. And uh, Brian, if you're watching, a special thank you to you. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I expect something like this to happen. Um, this is a dream tarantula and you made that dream come true for me. So I really, really appreciate it. I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to taking care of your tarantulas and I look forward to giving you updates while you're on your trip so that you can see how your tarantulas are doing. For the rest of my subscribers or my viewers, um, thank you. And if you like what you see, please give me a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.